is actually making a supersonic plane that'll fly passengers at nearly twice the speed of modern day aircraft. But is Boom's airplane, which is called Overture, a quiet thump producing supersonic aircraft like the one NASA just took delivery of? And why does it matter anyways? So to start, no, the Overture will make a boom sound as it flies at supersonic speeds. But due to the aircraft not having afterburning engines, like how almost all typical supersonic aircraft do, boom's boom should be quieter than a typical supersonic boom. But that doesn't mean that it's a quiet thump, which is what NASA's new aircraft, the X-59, should be able to achieve. And it does have an afterburning engine. NASA says the X-59 when flying above will sound like a car door being shut 100 feet away from you. Basically, if you're paying attention, you'll hear it, but it's not going to be the earth-shaking, window-breaking boom some may have heard before. And while Overture might not be that loud, it's still looking like that it will make a boom. That's because of the design of the aircraft. While definitely more sleek than your conventional, let's say, A320, comparing it to the X-59, you can see the X-59 is much more elongated and sleek compared to the Overture, which seriously helps reduce and dissipate air shock waves that build up on the airframe during supersonic flight. Additionally, both the intake end and exhaust end of Overture's engines are on the underside of the aircraft, whereas the intake and exhaust ends of the X-59 are on the upper side, helping hide its noise to those on the ground. So let's say that things turn out the way that they're currently looking, where Overture manages to quiet the level of its boom, but produces a boom nonetheless. Why does that matter? Well, currently the FAA and many other aviation authorities around the world have a ban on commercial supersonic flight over land due to the severe noise disturbance it makes. So if Boom's plane has only managed to make a slightly quieter boom sound rather than completely eliminating it nearly altogether like what NASA is trying to achieve, the Overture is going to be stuck to flying supersonic solely over ocean. And with a limited range, that pretty much confines the Overture to transatlantic routes. Furthermore, with Europe especially becoming quite anti-air travel, Boom might find itself banned from even entering some of those potential markets. If that sounds improbable, it isn't. A country that would have likely greatly profited from having supersonic service is Israel. And recently, Israel banned all scheduled commercial services that are operated by four-engined aircraft which means that right off the bat, Overture won't be able to fly there. But that's in a world where Boom is actually flying. I really hate being so critical, but Boom's scaled down demonstrator aircraft has just recently taken off for the very first time, and it hasn't even reached supersonic speeds yet, which it was originally supposed to do all the way back in 2017, more than six years ago. It's been such a long ordeal that the planned overture of today doesn't even resemble what it once was back in 2016 which is what the demonstrator XB-1 is based off of. All in all, despite its ambitious claims, Overture appears destined for a very niche and restricted future, potentially one that is shrinking further as environmental concerns like fuel inefficiency per passenger take center stage. Exosonic, on the other hand, completely understands that if we are to have viable supersonic travel, that the aircraft we take will need to be quiet to those on the ground, and that's just the kind of aircraft that they're currently developing. In fact, they've actually received money from both NASA and the Air Force, and might even be making the next Air Force One. Click on the video on the right to learn more about them.